On the back of the nickel coin is the Jefferson Memorial Building, which, as we have already seen, is a large circular dome above an open-air rotunda. The Jefferson Memorial symbolizes the oculus of God with the enshrined soul of Thomas Jefferson central to its core, peering upward toward the heavens and showing the way to search for ideals in politics. Although Thomas Jefferson was able to get so many Freemasons and founding fathers, each with their own political and religious ideologies, to agree on signing the U.S. Constitution, and although Jefferson was instrumental in bringing together the dozens of Freemasons who signed the American Declaration of Independence, because he opposed the idea of a central bank, when it came time to put his face on money, they could only manage to find room for him on the two-dollar bill. Hence the expression, queer as a two-dollar bill, because to see one of them in circulation is unusually rare. The face of the 34th president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or FDR, is stamped onto the front of the dime or ten-cent piece. Like Jefferson on the nickel, but unlike Lincoln, he looks from right to left. FDR was a prominent Shriner, an appendant body to the proper Freemasonic Lodge. FDR was president during the second half of World War II, following Truman. Although aging and suffering from pronounced Parkinson's syndrome, FDR attended the winter post-war peace conference with Winston Churchill of Great Britain and Joseph Stalin of Soviet Russia to lay the groundwork for the modern United Nations, UN. On the back of the dime is a burning fasces, the rod that symbolized state authority in ancient Rome. On either side of this are two th twigs of plants, one olive, one acacia, signifying peace restraining the fires of war. Across this motif is scrawled the slogan, E Pluribus Unum, Latin translating as All for One. This slogan also appears on the banner held by the beak of the eagle in the front side of the U.S. Great Seal. It also shows up on the banner in the beak of the eagle in the U.S. Presidential Executive Seal. The face, looking right to left in profile, of George Washington appears again on the front of the quarter dollar or 25 cent piece of coin. Because of the writings on the subject by Southern Jurisdiction Scottish Rite Freemason Albert Pike, the Freemasons are often confused by anti-Masons, for devil worshippers. Chief among these charges relates the statue of George Washington and his Masonic memorial to the pose of the goatfoot pan god Baphomet in this late 19th century sketch by French magician Eliphas Levy, drawn before the sculpting of Washington's bust statue. On the back of the quarter dollar or 25 cent piece coin, usually appears an eagle perched on a fasces of arrows above a double olive branch, with its wings downward and the familiar saying E Pluribus Unum emblazed above its phoenix-feathered bald head. Contrast this symbol for the state authority of the southern jurisdiction of Scottish Rite, free and accepted masonry, with the symbol for the state authority that can be summoned by the northern jurisdiction of Scottish Rite Free and Accepted Masonry. While the wings of the eagle in the south on the reverse side of the quarter are folded downward, the wings of the eagle in this logo for the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, DHS, are upward and in flight. During the year 1976, to commemorate the 200-year bicentennial celebration since the signing of the Declaration of American Independence from Great Britain, the Treasury issued quarters during that year that have a different emblem on their reverse from the usual Southern Eagle motif. On the back of these, somewhat more rare and obscure quarters, minted in 1976, is a marching patriot beating a drum 
surmounted by the symbol of 13 pentagram stars in a circle around the burning tip of a fascist torch. As on the reverse side of all coins, we see the slogan again translated into Latin for all for one. The last coin we shall be discussing here is the 50 cent or half dollar piece. These coins are the largest, most rare of the set of U.S. minted coins and only came into circulation during the mid-1970s. On the front is the profile, looking right to left, of 35th U.S. President John Fitzgerald Kennedy, JFK. On the back side of the 50-cent piece coin, pressed by the U.S. Treasury Mint, opposite the head of President Kennedy, is the logo of the Executive Office's presidential seal in exact duplicate, displaying the exact differences between this logo and the similar logo of the eagle motif on the front of the U.S. Great Seal. President Kennedy was assassinated on November 22, 1963, in the third year of his term of office as U.S. President. Although to this day rumors and outright conspiracy theories circulate surrounding the details of his killing itself, however the idea he died for opposing and threatening to dismantle the CIA is a commonly held belief among most Americans. There is cursory evidence placing the later 41st U.S. President George Herbert Walker Bush, GHWB, at the scene of the JFK assassination at the time it took place. However, more than that he was, apparently, working for the U.S. CIA at the time remains merely speculation to this day. It is much better recorded, however, that George Bush Sr., GHWB, was a member, while at Yale University, of the fraternal secret society called Skull and Bones. He is seen here posing for the annual Bonesman's Yearbook photo with the skull of the Native American war hero Geronimo, stolen by his own father, Prescott Bush, for the frat one generation before. Here is G.H.W. Bush Sr. posing with the surviving presidents to follow Johnson, who had been JFK's vice president, VP. G.H.W.B. stands in the middle between Nixon, the 37th U.S. president, on the left, and Reagan, the 41st U.S. president, on the right. Standing next to Nixon on the right is Ford, the 38th U.S. president, on the far left, and on the far right, standing next to Reagan, is Carter, the 39th U.S. President. Each of these men belonged to one order or another, and though they appeared to the public to be competing over different ideologies, always cooperated on how to act while on camera when they met behind the scenes off camera. In this picture of the currently living U.S. Presidents, we see from left to right Bush Sr., the 41st President, Barack Hussein Obama, the 44th U.S. President, Bush Jr., the 43rd U.S. President, Clinton, the 42nd U.S. President, and Carter, again the 39th President to serve. These men are all connected to one another through similar methods as the original colonial-era revolutionary Jacobins were in the lodges of free and accepted masonry. However, these men, unlike our Masonic founding fathers, serve the conspiracy that is behind the Bavarian Illuminati. Just as with the senators who killed Julius Caesar, whose face is seen here in profile again from a silver coin pressed more than 2,000 years ago, these modern U.S. presidents are all accomplices to murder after the fact, and conspirators to commit financial fraud and assume dominant control over all the planet's available resources. And just as with those infamous senatorial assassins, these men have sacrificed their honor, their names, their very souls, to become foot soldiers, pawns, in the global political chess game of modern history, on the side that plays by the rules of the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, and who use the symbolism of the Bavarian Illuminati, 
and against the side of personal liberty and personal responsibility advocated by the Masonic Founding Fathers of the U.S. Constitutional Democratic Republic. Modern Politics 101A The Liberty Revolution We can begin to study modern politics simply enough by looking at these three pillars or columns symbolizing the triple cardinal branches of a democratic republic. On the left, we see the white pillar, signifying Jachin to Freemasons, capped by the Hebrew letter Shin for the Sh phenom. In the middle is the gray middle pillar, signifying the path between the two pillars, capped with the Hebrew Aleph, the letter equivalent to the English A. On the right, we see the black pillar, signifying Boaz to Freemasons, capped with the Hebrew letter Mem, cognate to the English letter M. The three Hebrew letters are called the three mothers in the literature of HaKabalah, and they are equivalent to the three primary alchemical elements as well. Mem is salt, Shin is mercury, and Aleph is sulfur. In the Sefer Yetzirah of HaKabalah, it describes their relation as a pan of merit and a pan of liability, with a breath of air to decide between them. Here we see the symbols for the element of water below Mem and fire below Shin, with the combination of them into one glyph, signifying the Star of David, representing the breath of air. However, what, one might yet well wonder, have these three pillars and their strange-sounding attributes from arcane, occult mystery schools and secret societies have to do with the basic structure of modern political government? Besides being able to be symbolized also by the three primary types of column brocade, Ionic, Doric, or Corinthian, these three pillars have very little meaning to far too many people, even those who have sworn an oath to uphold these pillars. These three simple vertical pillar or column symbols signify the three core branches of government in a democratic republic. The Congress, up the left, is comprised of twin branches, the Senate and the House of Representatives. The administrative branch, in the middle, is divided, likewise, into a presidential and vice presidential office, each with its own unique set of rules and duties. The judiciary branch, down the right is divided likewise into a single supreme court over a series of smaller district circuit courts. These are the three branches of government in a democratic republic. Now I will briefly explain how each functions. The Congress is comprised, or is supposed to be comprised, entirely of democratically elected officials. The two houses comprising this electoral body are the senators, elected every four years, and the congresspeople of the House of Representatives, elected every two years. Here we see the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., home of these twin houses of Congress. Most of the senators and congresspeople of the United States Democratic Republic form of government are noble public servants who seek to better their world through service to a higher cause. However, there are times when many, even a majority in both houses, can be bought out by a third-party corporate interest. Because there are an even number of members in the Senate and the House each, the result of such corporate purchasing of votes can, and often does, lead to stalemates on key legislations. The Congress plays the following simple roles on the federal level of the U.S. Democratic Republic. Congress makes laws and approves or vetoes presidential appointments. Two senators are elected per each of the 50 states, totaling 100 senators. The numbers of Congress people elected to represent each state